Greetings everyone, this is Danny from hardtravel.com, your cruise experts, and today I'm in beautiful Skagway, Alaska. Now we're getting ready to do one of my favorite excursions in the entire world. I've been on a lot of cruises, I've done a lot of excursions, but there are none that top this in my mind because you combine some of my favorite things. Of course, the incredible scenery that is the White Pass. You're also gonna get a lot of history, so they'll do a full, full narration on your way up and down, pointing out the important spots and really explaining the history of the Gold Rush here in Skagway. Now what you're gonna do for this particular tour is you're gonna start in one of two spots. So you might start right at the depot here downtown. The trains also head directly over to the cruise ship. So make sure you pay attention to that when you book the excursion. Then you're gonna get on the train. There's several different combinations of it. So you can do a round trip or a one-way combined with another tour. And there's also some versions that head all the way into Canada as well. Now for those, you do need to bring your passport. Make sure you remember that. So right here, we're at the train depot. I also wanted to point out that you have the visitor center for the national parks. They're gonna do some complimentary tour options for you. You maybe wanna do that before or after the train trip, but it's all about the experience of a narrow gauge train. Now, just behind me is actually one of the very first trains that ever went up the Whitehall Pass. So this is the White Pass and Yukon Route Railroad, narrow gauge train, incredible scenery. You're sure to love it, and I highly recommend that you check it out. Now join us as we take the tour. So now we're on the train. This is one of the train cars. They're all very similar. You're gonna have a heater in the corner of each and every one because it can get a little bit chilly in here, especially early and later in the season. You have these huge windows on either side. And as we head back just a little bit, I wanted to point out how this works. So when you get on board, of course, you're gonna grab a seat. The left-hand side is gonna be the one that's looking out at uh, the, the big grandiose scenery. Of course, you got phenomenal scenery and waterfalls on the other side as well. When you get to the very top, they're actually gonna swap sides. So they're gonna ask those who are on the left side to move to the right, basically swap it up. And then the chairs actually flip over. So now when you're heading back down, you're facing the front of the train as well. So you're gonna get both views, one on the way up and the other on the way down. Now, in addition to that, I did wanna point out that there is a restroom on each and every train car. It's really nice and convenient for that. That's why I love this excursion. It's a place where you can really relax, chill, taking some of the most extraordinary views in the entire world. Now, I did want to point out those with accessibility needs. Of course, cruising is one of the best ways to travel in that sense, but I, they also have it on quite a few of the excursions. So here you can see they have the lift. They also have an area cleared out as well, depending on what your needs are. So make sure you do let them know that you do need the accessible car when you're signing up. Now there's several different versions of this particular tour. You've got the most classic of them where you do a round trip. So basically you take the train up to mile marker 21, which is the top of the pass. And then what they're gonna do is they're gonna swap the engine. So they'll take them from the front to the back. The back will be the new front. You also have the ones that are one way where you can take it up and then a bus back or a combo tour. And they even have some that head all the way further up into Canada. Now keep in mind, if you are on one of the options that goes into Canada, you will need to bring your passport with you on the tour. Each and every train car is gonna have a platform at the front and the back of the car. Now, I always recommend going to the one in the back. That way you can take the pictures looking directly out to the front of the train instead of having people just in front of you. It's a great place to get a nice breath of fresh air, of course. You take advantage of that incredible scenery up close and personal. On one side, we've seen quite a few different waterfalls. On the other, you've got the valley down below you that's carved out by the Skagway River. Now, all of this used to be part of a massive, massive glacier. We're talking about millions and millions of years to create this incredible scenery. So this area is one of the toughest to actually build when they built out the railroad. They had to blast out the shelf that we're on right now. So essentially they used the equivalent of 40 train cars worth of explosives to blast it out. So when people came here for the very first time, a lot of them actually thought that Skagway was where the gold was. Those who knew otherwise realized it was up a hill. Nobody quite understood what the White Pass was like. Basically it starts out with a pretty easy grade. And then as we get up to this area, it just drops off completely. You go straight up. Directly across from us, you can actually see a tour bus in the distance. That's one of those viewpoints because that's the road that heads all the way up and into Canada. 
Now Juneau, the city we visited yesterday, is completely landlocked. It's the only landlocked capital in uh, the US. So you can't get in by car unless you take a ferry, the car on the ferry. For here though, you can actually drive all the way up into Canada, you can head all the way down to Florida if you'd like, or all the way up to the top of Alaska. Now there's so many incredible scenic spots here on the ride. You can sit back and enjoy all of it. This is just one of the many. You've got the glacial cop mountains up above us. You've got the Skagway River that we just crossed over. An incredible scenery throughout. Now throughout the entire cruise and this excursion, you're gonna see stunning waterfalls. This particular one is Bridal Veil Falls. You actually have to go all the way to the top. It's about 4,000 feet down with several different cascades of waterfalls. You see the beautiful clearing out there now. There's some glaciers up at the top of the mountains. Of course, it's fed from several different glaciers and other sources, and then it ends up down in the Skagway River below, which is gonna head directly out to the Skagway Fjord, which is how we came in this morning but there is nothing but incredible scenery throughout this entire excursion. I love, absolutely love being out here, getting that fresh air and taking in some of the most beautiful nature in the entire US. Now there is scenery all around. There's incredible stories. Once again, I love the personal stories of each and individual, each individual who did this incredible climb. One thing that's very, very interesting is many of them did it quite a few times because the Canadian government made sure that they had a year's worth of provisions before they could go into Canada. So many of them would come up and down nearly a dozen times. And this was sold as the easier route. You could bring pack animals. You could probably imagine seeing this incredible scenery. It was not a great thing for those pack animals, the mules and the horses, but all of this was about gold fever. And all the gold was discovered in Dawson City, which is about 600 more miles in. So you can do it floating, you can also do it hiking or trekking, but the Canadian government wanted to make sure that those who got into Canada had the ability to sustain themselves because they didn't have the resources in Dawson City either. They didn't have all the agriculture that they needed basically to support a population of tens of thousands of people that were piling in. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this experience was the ultimate adventure. If you were successful, you made it back to your hometown, you were a celebrity for the rest of your life. But it was also one of the most arduous adventures that you could possibly imagine. It was tough to get here. It was tougher even more to get up through the pass and then to make it, stake a claim, find success and make it all the way back. Not that many people did it, but you can imagine if you were reading a newspaper in New York City, you heard about people offloading you know, bags and bags, tons of gold. This was a brilliant idea for those who didn't have money to come and do it. But of course, those who didn't have money going into it, it was tough for them to succeed. In fact, quite a few of them ended up help building this railroad, building the tent cities and everything else just to make enough income to get up, head into Canada and try their search for gold. Now, of course, this entire railroad was constructed by almost 35,000 people over the time frame. If you can see just down below me, there's actually a cross. You can see it's down there for Juneau and Dunn. You can't really see it, it looks like the ground. That is a house-sized boulder that actually fell on two gentlemen who were constructing it. Of course, they couldn't get them out from underneath. But there's so many stories up here that are associated with amazing characters. In fact, when you're in the town of Skagway itself, there, I definitely recommend you stop by the National Park Service. They're gonna have all kinds of different information on that. And then you can also do a complimentary walking tour from the National Park Service as well. But what I love about going up here is as they tell the stories that kind of bring back history, something I always ask my students to do when I was middle school teacher was put your put yourselves in their shoes and that's a really tough thing to do we're on this really nice comfortable train incredible scenery you can imagine going up here when it's full of snow or a blizzard comes around but each and every one of these people represents a human story and they are characters you have to be a pretty tough person to decide to pack up from new york or chicago or texas and head up for the gold rush and of course most people didn't strike it rich in fact most people left dirt poor there were a few that did incredibly well but as we know now the ones who did really really well were actually the store owners the saloon owners those hoteliers the people that were making the money off of the miners they were heading up for this incredible gold rush 
Now we just got off that incredible train ride and once again, absolutely blew me away with all of the scenery, the history. To me, it's the perfect combination tour. Now just behind me is the train shop. So you can stop by there, get some different souvenirs and memorabilia from the trip. They have a lot of different options in there. And then of course, we highly recommend that you explore Skagway. Now right next to the train shop, you're gonna find the visitor center for the Klondike Gold Rush National Historic Park. They do some complimentary tours from there. It's also a bit of a museum. Now the National Park Service has a big presence here in Skagway. I highly recommend that you check out the website before you arrive. And then you can combine that in with your time here as well. Now there's a wide variety of excursions. If you're here on a longer stop, and many of them are, you can also check out our dog mushers and gold panning combo tour that we did this morning. We have that on the channel as well. We also have a bit of a Skagway tour, but there's so many great options here in Skagway. You can get out of town, do some exploration. There's some really phenomenal hikes. You can head up to the, the uh, gold, gold Rush Era Cemetery as well. But I definitely recommend that you head around town. You can check out the Red Onion Saloon, the only saloon that's still operating all the way back from the eight, late 1800s. You also have the Skagway Brewing Company if you want a little more modern option. Absolutely delicious beers that they brew right here in Skagway. They have some phenomenal food there as well. But I really, really recommend that you dedicate as much time as you can to stay in city, explore. There's a great quilt shop that my wife loves. There's some fantastic food options. And you can combine it with another excursion as well. But this historical city has it all. It's got the scenery, the art, the architecture, some incredible locals that are storytellers and artists as well. We highly recommend that you check all that out when you're here in Skagway.